Hi, I'm Dave Roberts and this is Anglin Escapades. Hi, I'm Dave Roberts and welcome to the first ever Anglin Escapades video blog. You join me on the banks of the beautiful River Wye today. And this is the start of a process where we're going to try and bring a weekly diary of what we've been up to, uh, the catches we've had, the people we've met, things we've encountered. And we want to cover different subjects on the river, things that affect our fishing and our fish stocks. Um, we want to engage with the viewers, we want people to get in touch and we can answer questions uh, through this vlog. And um, yeah, generally we just want to make it sort of an in informative and interesting weekly hub. Um, what is Anglin Escapades? Well, Anglin Escapades is me. It's uh, my guiding service on the River Y. It's also about my match angling. It's about my adventures. It's about my dog. Come here, Monty. This is Monty. Monty comes with me. A lot of places we go. Um, some days he looks at me like he hates me because it's pouring with rain. And then days like today he just likes pottering around. But one thing's for sure, if I leave the house without him in the morning, he just whines and sulks with me. So you'll see Monty, he'll crop up occasionally. So the first vlog, what we're going to do, um, we are basically in, well into the close season now. And... Uh, Really, all I'm doing at the moment is salmon fishing, which I'll come on to a bit in a minute. Uh, but we have perhaps have a look back at what we got up to this year on the river. Uh, Anglin Escapades was born uh, in the early summer last year. And what an incredible summer it was with uh, the heat wave, drought conditions, some brilliant catches in amongst it, but also some quite serious issues as well. I think we started off, we had some, uh, we had some great catches. We had Barbel and Chubb from the early season, from, the, from when the season started. And one session that springs to mind is uh, a day I had with uh, Paul Morgan. And we went out and it was the hottest day of the year to that point, I believe. And we didn't go until the afternoon, but we still both nearly collapsed of heat exhaustion by the time we got to our peg. But that evening we caught so many chub and barbel on uh, fishing waggler tactics. And uh, it was incredible fishing, really was. And I know it's a, 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 a session that Paul certainly won't forget. But that kind of marked the start of a, a period of uncertainty for us, really. You could tell these fish were being caught in the oxygenated water. And there was a reason for that. Those fish were crammed into that oxygenated water for survival. There were, the, the oxygen levels were so low and there was a lot of fish in small areas of water. And that meant that if, if a bait passed them by, they were going to take it. So there was lots of talk of, oh, the river's fishing incredible, isn't it? You know, the fish are healthy and what have you. Well, I wasn't buying it. I didn't, so I thought, you know, that we reached a point where we were potentially damaging these fish by fishing for them. And I was pleased to be a part of, of uh, Hereford and District Angler Association who closed their waters uh, for fish welfare, fish welfare only. And um, a lot of other people followed suit. And... It was the right decision at that time. I wasn't, as I say, I heard lots of arguments against it. And it was right for this river. I'm not saying it was right for every river, but this river in particular, um, I, I thought it was a, 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 a very mature decision to make. So we had a period then of about six weeks where we didn't fish the river. And um, luckily then the temperature started to cool, the nighttime temperatures cooled. We had a bit of rain, we had a bit of oxygen back in the water. And we were back on it and um, it was incredible really then sort of as, as towards the end of the summer what was became apparent was the amount of silverfish dace and roach that were in the river and it was a, a precursor to, to what would happen in the winter with the matches and uh, it was the signs were really good but on top of that the chub and barbel fishing was brilliant um, and pike uh, quite early on in, in October there were some really big pike that came out and um, it was uh, it was really shaping up to be quite a, an autumn and winter. And then we got onto match fishing, uh, onto the Belmont stretch in Hereford, which is, you know, the winter mecca, if you like. 
and uh, I say early on you could see there was uh, there was a lot of fish there a lot of dace a lot of roach uh, lots of chublets just every species and um, you're always careful not to be too uh, think look too far ahead but it really did look like it was going to be a bumper winter and that's how it turned out um, the big difference this year is we, we're no strangers to big shoals of dace and chublets but this year we had the roach and when this river is, is, is on its top roach form it's there's no other place like it um, and uh, we had some incredible sessions I took people out and they were able to really target the roach um, there were there were there were a lot of catches that that spring to mind. Um, Richard Vaughan and Wayne Price, they came, they wanted to target roach. Uh, both brilliant anglers, you know, do their own thing, do lots of different fishing, but they'd never really caught many river roach. So we went out and we targeted them and they were able to catch uh, big roach up to, some nearly up to two pound on uh, on stick floats and, uh, and Wayne fished uh, stick float with a centre pin. And it was, it was as traditional as it gets really, but um, that was a brilliant session. Uh, Richard Davis, Richard came down all the way down from Chesterfield, I believe, on a real cold day. Um, but again, we fished stick floats with casters and maggots and um, caught some, some beautiful roach. And, and I think uh, I think Richard will be back soon because uh, that was that was an incredible day's fishing. And myself personally, in, in matches, we had, uh, I was lucky enough to, to, to draw pegs, which enabled me, and, and, and I caught uh, a 50, 56 pounds of roach. I caught a 64 pounds of roach, 67 pounds of roach, and those were match wins, and those are days that I'll never forget. There's, there, if you were to give me one method and one species, stick float and roach, for the rest of my life, that'd do me. Um, there's nothing better in my opinion. So we had a really good winter. Uh, the matches were incredible. I say we had festival weights over 100 pounds of chub. We had barbel weights over 70 pounds. Um, just. Just brilliant fishing all the way through. We were lucky, really, for the winter. We didn't lose um, any more many matches to, to flood conditions. We fished right through. And we had brilliant fishing. The pike fishing, and that was something that really got hold of me this year. Quite often, and, and I hear it a lot. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who, who want to go pike fishing, but they're a bit nervous about what to do if they did catch a pike because obviously pike have got teeth and they want to know how to handle them. And, and it's quite a common theme. I've been hearing it a lot and I've been able to take a few people out this year uh, and catch them pike, catch pike with them and get them on the bank and let them hold them and unhook them. And um, one session that just <laughs> was one of my favorite sessions of the winter was we took the um, took Joe and Chris Morris, two brothers out uh, who I've known since they were uh, kids. Again, really good anglers and um, they love their fishing, but they were just that little bit nervous about going pike fishing on their own. So we took them out and we took them out on a just a, it was like almost like the perfect pike morning. It was white frost. We'd had snow in the week before, but it was white frost. It was bright sunshine. And we were here on the river before before first light and um, fished. And we dropped in some really pike look, pikey looking holes. And I was convinced we were gonna catch one. And the day wore on and we worked so hard. And as the day was wearing on, you're thinking this isn't gonna happen. And, um, we literally had about five minutes left of fishing, and uh, when we had to, we were about to go, and, um, and I was, you know, I was thinking these, you know, these lads aren't going to experience what we came here for. And then all of a sudden, the pike bung just bobbed and bobbed again, and off it went. And then uh, the next thing, then uh, Chris was hooked into a fish, and it, it was under a, an overhanging tree, and it went under the tree, and we thought we'd lost it, and then it came out, and. Eventually, we uh, we landed the fish, and it was a fish of just I think it was just under 17 pounds. Uh, and what a fish for your first pike, 17 pounds. And uh, they were we were just we were all elated really. I was as happy as them, and uh, we were able to get it on the bank, and they were both able to hold it, and we were un unhook it, and um, yeah, it was just incredible incredible day really, and uh, real sort of uh, real achievement for the lad. So. That was one of my favourites, and pike fishing. This, you know, I've had some lovely pike up to 22 pounds this this winter, and one of my favourite, actually, probably my favourite uh, little thing was we, we. I was asked to do some filming for um, Catch More Media for Docco Pool Stretch at Rotherwus, and um, it's not something I've done before. Is film for pike? It's you know, I'm not, I'm not the pike expert. I can catch pike, I know how to catch pike, and um, but I have a very simplistic approach to it, and try not to complicate things. And uh, we just wanted to highlight how good the water was down there. So we went out again before first light and uh, we waited about an hour. And eventually again, that pike bung bobbed off and all of a sudden then we're into a fish and it was a big fish as well. Um, just, I couldn't quite give myself 20 pounds for it, but 
19 pound something 14 ounces or something and um that was a real buzz that was as good as any match win catching one for the cameras like that so um yeah i really enjoyed that and that's something i'll perhaps do again sometime because um you know it's, it's a new experience for me so and that was pretty much it for the end of the season for me that was um i say it was just just an incredible winter just every species you wanted to catch you know they fed and um and that's uh that was the end of that really the end of the season the river was fairly high and we lost a, a bit of fishing but there was still barbel caught right to the end of the season and um, but and of course now, uh, a couple of weeks into the close season and the river's almost perfect, you know, we've got a little tinge of colour. So th this time of year now, I'm on to salmon fishing. Salmon fishing is something that's become an obsession for me, uh, especially this time of year. Um, this is how my angling journey started really, not far from here, just downstream. I used to follow behind uh, my dad who was a big salmon fisherman who used to catch his salmon and used to get paid handsomely for them, selling them to local hotels. And uh, I used to follow behind him with a little Woolworths rod spinning, trying to catch anything, but really not catching much. But um, that's where it all sort of began. And uh, in the last few years, I've got come back to salmon fishing and catching them and chasing them. And they, they're just such an incredible creature. And, and gladly these days, we're not, uh, you know, they all go back. We're not, uh, we're not taking the fish out. And um, just uh, just meeting these fish for a, a brief moment is is incredible. And and we've had a great start to the season. I was a, I caught my first fish um, two weeks ago, and it, uh, just a small fish of eight pound, but fought like nothing else, and um, uh, just a lovely fish to start the season. And then this week we've had um, we took uh, a friend of mine, Simon, out. Uh, Simon wanted to catch a salmon. He's a big pike angler, but he really wanted to catch a salmon, so we took him out for the first time and uh, he caught his first salmon a fish of 13 pounds an incredible fish and uh, he's absolutely uh, was buzzing with that and now he's absolutely hooked so he wants another one now so and we've this year we've really got some good water for salmon so we can really take people out with a, a realistic chance of catching one of these just incredible creatures and and yes you can't guarantee you're going to catch them and um, you know there's a lot of days we don't but um, just one fish a season is enough with these fish they just they're just incredible creatures and um that's basically what i'm up to now so what i'll do in the next the next blog what we'll do is perhaps have a little, little bit more look more of a look at the tackle and what we use to try and catch these salmon we've got a few trips coming out as well i'm going up to scotland for a trip so we might do a a, a vlog from there um and just try and keep it interesting really but if anybody's got any questions about the river or whatever uh, you know lots of subjects i'm not bothered about if, if they're controversial subjects you know there's lots of things that affect our fishing and i'm happy to discuss them so please get in touch uh website email address social media all listed below and um yeah keep in touch and we'll try and uh, try and keep it interesting for you so um tight lines for the week ahead and i'm now going to go and try and catch a salmon Thank you.